we see today social media in its current state, um, in our opinion, that is not really sufficient. I mean, the business model is quite simple. You as a user, you um, get a service for free and they monetize your data. What's up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dab Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. I'm your host, Fareed. As a part of today's video, we're diving into everything smart places. Now, I'm going to be joined by Bjorn, the co founder and co CEO of this project. I'm going to go ahead and bring him on here and let's go ahead and get the, the conversation rolling. Bjorn, welcome aboard. How are you doing today? Hi, Farid. Thanks for having me. I'm great. It, what about you? I'm doing great. It's Monday. Um, I've got my morning ready to go, and I'm excited to dive into everything SPX and Smart Places. So as a part of today's video, we're going to be getting a brief introduction to Smart Places. We'll be talking a little bit about how the platform works, what you kind of envisioned. And then there's also an upcoming token launch, and then some recent progress that has been made with your map that I want to dive into as well. So just to kind of maybe kind of lay the foundation, do you mind maybe giving us a little bit of information surrounding yourself, your background, and how you kind of came into the crypto and Web3 space? And then we're going to shift over into smart places. Yes, absolutely. So my name is Bjorn. I juggle a few roles. So from being a lawyer to entrepreneur and co-founder of smart places, I have a passion for tech and blockchain. I came across blockchain actually some years ago, just out of interest. Um, you know, I want to find out a bit more about technology, how things work, um, but also from a legal perspective in terms of regulation. So that kind of boring stuff. Um, later, that became a bit more concrete. Uh, I was auditing some of those centralized social media companies from a data privacy and compliance perspective. That was very interesting. I learned a lot. Um, and I came across uh, some of those decentralized alternatives. And that was actually a kind of starting point for me. So I, you know, I went down this rabbit hole and still caught there. Um, in terms of Cardano, maybe quickly, we are on Cardano since 22. Uh, for us, it was actually a kind of very easy decision. I mean, Cardano, um, not only uh, value-based and community-driven. I mean, those are two key factors for us since we are, as a social network, completely uh, community-driven. And also, co uh, also the values, um, core element of, of our whole uh, vision and mission. Um, but besides that, you know, this peer reviewed approach of Cardano for us, totally convincing. Um, from our end, we also try, you know, to plan a lot to always deliver quality and to think uh, things through before we go out, um, even if it takes sometimes a bit longer. Yeah, and in general, I would say so the high level of decentralization, uh, low transaction fees, and so on. So, uh, there are a lot of factors that. Con convinced us from the start to to be and to go on Cardano and we're happy to still happy to be here. And I'm sure that the Smart Places community is happy that you've chosen and built on Cardano. I tend to kind of get that response with a lot of members that I bring on here talking about the permission list, the um, peer review approach and the decentralization that Cardano has taken, which again, um, it does tend to be a little bit of a laggard compared to other networks, but I think it'll prove to be the right decision in the long run. Now, I also didn't realize that you are a lawyer by nature. So that was really interesting to hear there as well. Um, a jack of all trades, it seems here. Now, let's maybe just kind of shift into the actual Smart Places platform. It's a social fi project or protocol right here building on Cardano. I believe you're leveraging augmented reality and AI. For anybody who's hearing about Smart Places for, for the very first time, can you explain what that is and exactly what the goal or objective of a platform like Smart Places is? Yeah, so Smart Places, geolocation-based social networks that rewards users for connecting and interacting. Um, maybe Quickly, before I explain you what we are doing, um, just in a nutshell, what drives us. So we see today social media in its current state. Um, in our opinion, that is not really sufficient. I mean, the business model is quite simple. You as a user, you um, get a service for free and they monetize your data. This could be okay in a way, but you as a user, at least you should be informed about that and you should have a choice. Um, that is often not the case. And second, what we see today, a highly interconnected world and society, and on the other end, a more and more digitalized, but also isolated society. And we want to shift that towards more real world encounters and more real world involvement. I say shift, not switch. That's why we say we want to bring geolocation to social media. 
So we are creating a social ecosystem that empowers users and that is at the same time giving value back to the users for sharing their data, for rewarding them for being active and interacting and for letting them participate in our social and content creator network. That is what we call connect to earn. And we think that is, that is good, that is great. But at the same time, we feel that is not enough. Um, you know, our team, we have um, a kind of broad business background. So me personally, I came from KPMG. Hung, he was, um, he was manager at Goldman Sachs. Luca, a serial entrepreneur since over 20 years. Um, he has a Microsoft background, developed uh, IT platforms for Saudi Aramco, for example, but also um, for Volkswagen and other bigger companies. So we, we know what we're doing. And our understanding was all the time, we need to have this basic approach um, but what we also need besides strong partners, of course, and a strong strategy, um, we also need exciting elements and components. So tools that people really like and love and that they, you know, that is so compelling and fascinating that they can't resist to use it. And that brings me to the components that we are developing, the tools, actually two in parallel. One is already live. That is our NFT land plot map. So what have we done? We divided the world into small hexagons. Each hexagon represents a piece of the real world. You can buy each of those land plots as an NFT. So why would you buy one of those? First, it's a unique digital asset. And second, it has a real world relevance. You as a land plot owner, you will be rewarded for all interactions that are happening on your land plot. So the more people are active on your land plot and the more they are engaged, the higher your reward. And the same goes for the businesses. So the more businesses are active on your land plot and the more they are engaged. So for example, through placing ads on your, on your specific land plot, the higher your rewards. So that is a land plot map, um, quite successful. We sold over 22,000 of those land plots um, and NFTs so far, but let's quickly switch the perspective. Um, now imagine you're not the land plot owner, but one of those people in real life spending time on your, in real life again, on your represented land plot. And that brings me to our mobile app. People will, will use our app for exploring their close vicinity. So in terms of people, so you can, for example, share your thoughts, needs, or your socials with people in your close vicinity, in your direct environment. That goes for parks, universities, but also bars, or let's say more business uh, related, co-working spaces or also exhibitions, for example. There you can just share your LinkedIn profile if you want. Um, so that opens a world for communication at your immediate environment. Um, what you also can do is that you explore your environment in terms of news or events. So we enable our partners to place virtual items on the map. Um, it's up to our partners to decide what they want to and in which manner they want to place it. The tools that we are offering are uh, 3D elements, but also AR components, and later on also holo ads. So from a user perspective, that means you will find on our map those um, elements. You physic physically need to go to this place. Then you switch to the cam view, and then you grab this item. Um, again, up to our partners to decide what they want to encapsule in those elements. But for, for users, it's of course, kind of entertaining because you now find out what is included in those elements. Um, might be a voucher, it might be just information, but it also could be, for example, a link to a e-commerce offer. Um, and again, uh, the core principle, if you as an app, users, uh, app user, if you are active, you will be rewarded with tokens or in, in this point, in this case with uh, smart points, but you can redeem them to tokens. So you're always rewarded for those interactions. And that is in the nutshell, our ecosystem. Nicely put and nicely summarized. I think you may have actually hit on one of my additional questions, which was just surrounding the roles um, of the actual ecosystem, right? So just to make sure I understand, you mentioned the connect to earn model, which allows for the land plot owners, which those land plots were minted about two years ago, to actually earn the SPX token, which we're going to be diving into in just a moment, depending on the engagement that takes place on their owned land. In addition, for businesses, right, this gives them an opportunity to sort of somewhat gamify their 
their audience in their social um, interactions, which I think is a really awesome feature to hear and to see as well. Now, my follow up question was going to was going to be surrounding the actual roles in the smart places ecosystem. You've talked about land plot owners. You talked about the end the end users or the app users or businesses. But I know that there's also sort of like the pioneers role. Are there maybe any sort of other roles you can highlight within the ecosystem? And then I want to jump into and talk a little bit more about the utility um, of the land plots. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thanks for that. Um, we have on the one end, as we have, we have several components and um, participants here in the ecosystem. Uh, like you mentioned, app users. So those are exploring their close vicinity using our apps. And we have secondly, the land plot owners, or like uh, we call them, as we call them, pioneers. So those are not only the owner of the land plots, um, they receive the rewards for interactions on their land plots, but they are also rewarded for, you know, promoting their land plots, for onboarding people, onboarding businesses, for in general, pushing the ecosystem. Um, then there is a third component. Those are data consumers. Data consumers, maybe just as a quick background, um, when people, if people spending time at a specific place and they are enabled for interacting or exploring the vicinity, like it's the case in, with our app, then that creates a lot of value. Just as an example, you might know the digital out of home advertising market. That is a multi-billion dollar market. And that is exactly what's happening here. You have a whole industry that is doing nothing else than trying to target and to reach people that are spending time out of home. And the components that they are using at the moment, those are mainly, you know, digital billboards, um, digital screens, or like I recently have seen digital screens on cabs and driving taxis and something like that, right? So the components and tools they are using are in a way traditional. Um, we have here, like we think, um, a more innovative, innovative approach. Um, but the important factor here is that is an industry that, that is not lacking on budget. It's more lacking on tools. And we are opening that for them, actually. We are enabling them to create this kind of, not only create, but also locating and placing those kind of um, innovative um, ads. So data consumers, in our case, especially advertisers, but also, you know, um, machine learning institutions or companies, but also um, AI learning institutions and companies. Um, so that are the data consumers. And then on top, um, or actually besides that, we have our partners. Partners, you actually can, they, they, we actually have two groups. So you have on the one hand, uh, event organizers, for example, or also local stores, but also social institutions. So those kind of partners that want to highlight specific places. So want to create awareness um, uh, to that. So delivering information, makes, for example, but also driving food traffic to those exactly places that they want to highlight. Um, and the second group, those are more classically um, brands, but also advertisers, those that want to highlight products and services. And using our AR and um, HoloAid components, they have the, the tools to you know, um, exactly place them at a specific place and a specific time. They can use our, of course, our geolocation-based data, so highly precisely what they can, what they can um, offer and do. Um, just as an example, if you take, for example, Adidas, if they would um, decide as a, you know, sports shoe manufacturer, if they would decide to promote their next generation of sports shoes, and they can, using our data, they would know that at specific places, maybe a young generation of people are spending um, some time, let's say, in a park or next to a sports arena, so they can decide to, you know, place a 3D um a 3D mirror, 3D element of a sports shoe exactly at this place. Um, the users will see this, can find that, can grab it, go first, of course, to this place and then redeem it, whatever this might be. You also can organize scavenger hunts, scavenger hunts and so on. So, um, you know, that opens the door to a lot of marketing opportunities. Yeah, nicely said. So you you discussed the app users, data consumers, land plot owners, and partners or event organizers. I think again, this opens up um, a huge opportunity for anybody who's looking to create a community, um, connect with them in a somewhat um, digital way, right? Which the entire sort of world is shifting into. Um, so interesting points that you raised there. Now earlier you mentioned the land plots and those 
minting about two years ago. As it stands right now, I believe there's over 22,000 land pots already sold. You've highlighted, you know, some of the benefits for the app users. Is there any, anything else that you can share with us with respect to the land plots and maybe just what some of the um, future plans are if you guys are planning to add any additional utility or features around those? Yes, yeah, so the land plots and the land plot community, they play a huge role, a central role in our whole ecosystem. So on the one hand, the land plot owners, um, that is a very active part of our community, the early believers, great guys. Um, if you visit our Discord, you will see um, a lot of um, a lot of communication, a lot of discussions are going on. So that is amazing. Again, our early believers. Um, secondly, we consider the land plot owners, the pioneers, as a kind of marketing army. Why? Because not only, like I, like I said, they are not only incentivized for all the interactions that are happening on the land plot, but they are also incentivized for onboarding new users and for onboarding businesses. So, you know, to pushing um, this whole um, this whole economy. That um, brings us to the point that we can calculate with the kind of multiplier here. So, meaning on each land plot holder, we can calculate with around ten app users. So that um, brings us to the or me to the point that we need and want to increase the land plot community. That is important. Um, that's why we are also continuously adding more utility um, on the map, but also in general for the um, land plot um, holder community, for the pioneers. So as an example, already today, uh, geolocation-based posts are uh, possible. You can share them also on your, on your socials um, soon. And that is actually part of our um, catalyst uh, proposal. Um, our partners will be enabled to place NFTs on our map. Uh, followed by ads, but also, for example, airdrop tokens of our partners, um, points of interest, and so on. So a lot of exciting stuff is um, coming on top, and that is for us, of course, important because we want to increase the excitement for that and the interest for the land plot map. Um, and there's a second component that um, I think is very important. The land plot map is actually very, um, very, just made actually for onboarding Web2 users, you know, because already now, you as a Web2 user, you don't need to have any kind of understanding of wallets or NFTs. All you do is you create an account and you buy a land plot. And that's basically all. Um, we are in the background, we are creating um, uh, the Castolio wallet so that the NFTs are stored firstly there. And after, again, you as a Web2 user, after you maybe once understand what really decentralization means, what also Cardano has to offer, and you decide to create uh, your own non custodia wallet, then you can transfer the NFTs in your um, in your non-custodial wallet. Um, and that um, actually brings me to our next marketing campaign that we are planning, because that is exactly that. In around two months, we will go out with a, a bigger Web2 campaign. So that is targeting exactly on uh, Web2 users um, and will, again, increase the uh, land plot community a lot. And again, that is for us the basis for, for the next steps. Nicely put. I appreciate that information there. Um, I want to switch gears here and dive into some of your existing partnerships. So you and I were catching up late last week and you mentioned Porsche Ventures. You mentioned a reputable publishing company as well as an AI play here in the Web3 space, which is Singularity Net. Can you maybe highlight you know, how each one of these partners plays into the vision for smart places and exactly why you've chosen these particular entities. Yes, um, absolutely. So like I mentioned for us, as we are um, building here a kind of complex system and a whole ecosystem, um, not only the strategy is important, that's why I pointed out the land plot map that, that matters because again, just putting out an app even if it's very exciting and great, that is just not enough. You need to have the awareness before and you need to create a hype before. That's why, again, um, the Lamplo community is um, crucial. But besides that, of course, uh, partners definitely matters. In our case, that means we have, uh, on the one hand, in terms of Web3, uh, we are partnering with SingularityNet. So in terms of data monetization um, and AI content moderation, SingularityNet is a great and strong partner for us. Um, then secondly, we are partnering with APX. Um, they are also invested in us, uh, actually in two rounds. APX is a joint venture of the car manufacturer Porsche. You might know they also run a uh, NFT series in the past. Um, but second, Axel Springer, 
Axel Springer, that is Europe's largest media publisher, digital media publisher. They are huge. Um, they just recently acquired Business Insider and Politico in the US. They own the biggest newspaper in Germany. So when it comes to visibility, once we decide to really enter the market with our app, so in terms of visibility, we have actually we don't we don't have any con concerns, right? Of course, it requires a good marketing strategy in the end, but the partners we have here on board. Um, and last but not least, I mean, just to mention that as well, because that is also a important partner. That is Advanced Store. Uh, we just recently uh, tweeted that also. Um, more than 50,000 brands in their database, also in the digital out of home advertising market, very active. And that again is something, one of those multipliers that you need to, you know, um, not only go out, create one kind of excitement, but also keeping people. Um, in the on the platform and within the app. So it sounds like um, one of them, uh, I think that's Singularity Net, being able to aid you guys in the AI and AR sort of realms. I know that they've got um, a basically ecosystem focusing on, on that sort of niche. And then you mentioned the publishing partner to helping out with marketing, spreading the word once things are ready to go live. So uh, I think both of those facets made a lot of sense. I think the next thing I want to jump into will be Let's see here. I believe it's the token launch. So you mentioned earlier how by being a land plot owner, by using the application, et cetera, you're able to rack up points, right? So the more you engage, the more that you're able to earn. Can you highlight when we can expect to see the SPX token launch and then its utilities for holders? Yeah, so absolutely. Um, in terms of the token launch, uh, I think it makes sense. We will go out with a lot of more additional information later on. Um, we will run a LBE on MinSwap beginning of April, but again, a lot of more communication uh, will be done on our on our end. In terms of the tokens, um, just to add that maybe, uh, we have, um, when it comes to the mobile app, all interactions are rewarded with so-called smart points. So not tokens, but smart points, but you know, users can um, redeem them into tokens. So switching them. Um, when it comes to the land plot owners there, indeed, we are talking about uh, uh, smart tokens, the SPX tokens. Um, you receive them uh, as a reward. So for all interactions that are happening on your land plot uh, or onboarding uh, businesses, users, and so on, you reward the tokens, uh, you receive the tokens as a reward. Um, secondly, it gives access to a lot of utility on the map. Um, also here, just to highlight some examples, uh, on the one hand, discount for NFT land plot sales, but also like enhancing post posting functionalities, that is one element. Um, and uh, it also gives a kind of government um, utility, opens um, the utility for that. So if you lock your tokens, um, depending on the amount of tokens that you're locking, you will have additional voting rights. So uh, we not only want to have that element included in terms of um, governance, but also rewarding that. So the more you are locking, the more tokens you're locking, the more re rewards you receive um, in return. And maybe just as a last element, because I think that's also very important, um, the tokens are in general very crucial for the ecosystem because we have included here a kind of buyback mechanism. So all the fiat revenue that is created within the ecosystem, a portion of that is always used for buying back uh, tokens uh, on the open market. Through that, we are stabilizing the token value. And um, again, giving here um, a, a kind of additional value so that it makes just sense to have the tokens and to hold the tokens. And that is, um, of course, um, an element and a uh, a part that is for us very important. You mentioned the difference between the smart points and the SPX token, which I was not aware. So I appreciate you um, clarifying that piece. And then the fact that the staking program will be coming soon, as well as the actual liquidity bootstrapping event. So viewers watching this right now, the token is not out. I'll go ahead and leave the links to the LBE or just the upcoming sale details that I have in the description down below. Now, I saw you guys announce an airdrop about maybe two weeks ago, um, a brand new campaign for people to um, refer each other, grow the Smart Places ecosystem, all while earning, I believe it's the SPX token in this instance. So do you mind you know, highlighting why an airdrop campaign and again, the mission or the goal of this uh, initiative? 
Yes, yeah, so creating awareness, of course, um, that was one of the main goals. Um, but, you know, also to, in general, introduce um, users, people, interesting folks um, to our platform. Um, yeah, it's actually quite easy to participate. All you need to do, basically, is to create an account. Uh, we included in this airdrop uh, program also our referral program. So if you, um, if you participate in that, then you um, receive additional not only um, airdrop tokens, but also ADA cashback for inviting more users into that. And this combination of those both programs, we think is, um, is, is um, a very good way to, to onboard people. Um, we also reached out to blockchains outside of, of Cardano, to communities, um, to also here highlight a bit what we are doing, that Cardano has a lot of, um, a lot of benefits. And again, also create here kind of awareness. Um, I think in general, um, Airdrop is, a, is a, nice, a nice tool, a nice element. Um, people talk about it, they can find out, they ask about the token, what is the utility, how to use this later. So, uh, so I would say it's so far already um, a great um, success. We have more than, uh, just uh, throughout this campaign, more than additional 10,000 10, um, accounts that had been created based on that. So yeah, that, was, that worked quite well for us. Yeah, that, that's huge. Um, I tend to find that airdrops always obviously um, boost engagement, right? Grow the community, but then it exposes uh, smart places to people that may not have heard it, heard of it before, right? And you're also able to spread the SPX token. Um, I think the very last thing before we jump into closing thoughts I want to talk about is the roadmap and just the progress. So you've mentioned everything that you guys have built up until now. You've highlighted the first sort of NFT sales, the land plots. What can we expect in terms of just your vision, the focus, and just accomplish, accomplishments, excuse me, in terms of the roadmap objectives for 2024? Yeah, so we have um, a tough roadmap, a lot of milestones um, ahead that uh, we want and need to accomplish, um, starting with our token launch beginning of, of April. Um, in around two months, we will run our marketing campaign uh, in terms of Web2 land plot owners. Um, that also will be a huge milestone. Then we will launch our app. Um, so target here around three to four months. Um, of course, we need to combine all those components. That's why engaging now, uh, in our opinion, uh, very reasonable since once the app is out, um, that uh, will create a lot of um, excitement, I would say. Um, of course, uh, you will hear about us when it comes to um, the, the markets, um, the, the regions we are targeting on when it comes to the, to the app launch. Uh, we will focus on the one end uh, on Europe, but this close uh, a little bit more later. Also the, the US, of course, we have um, in mind. But uh, yeah, later on, also the African and Asian markets um, will play a huge role. But um, yeah, that is, um, I think, a tough roadmap, a lot of milestone we wanted to achieve. Just for now, uh, we have um, ahead of us uh, finalizing the catalyst proposal. Um, so within the next uh, weeks, uh, we will per per step by step um, publish um, some more of those utilities that I just mentioned. Um, yeah, and um, actually every week we we try to, you know, put some more exciting things on, especially on on top of this um, land plot utility factor. Nicely said. And I, I think as a project owner, right, you have to make sure that you have. Um, quite a bit in front of you. I don't want to say that if you don't, that you you can kind of get lax, but I think it's always good to make sure that there's enough work ahead of you, not to overwhelm you, but to keep you passionate about adding utility, growing the project and providing more benefit to anybody who's in the smart places ecosystem. So I'll definitely be doing my due diligence to not only bring you back on here as more of these milestone targets are hit, but to just begin reporting more often when it comes to smart places. Now, Bjorn, we've gotten through, I think, the majority of my questions. The very last thing I want to close off with is maybe just any sort of closing thoughts that you have, right, that maybe we didn't get to highlight or that you think is of importance for the Cardano community to hear or to learn when it comes to smart places. I mean, um, please join us, our socials, um, join us on Twitter, join our Discord. That would be amazing. Um, we will have also many Twitter spaces um, ahead of us. So also there, we are sharing a lot of information additionally. Um, that would be that would be the best. Uh, create an account, find out about what we are doing. Um, yeah, and uh, feel free always to contact me 
I'm always happy to, you know, um, talk with you, discuss things. Um, again, we are speaking also with a lot of potential new partners. Um, so if you have questions, uh, whatever it is, just contact me and let's talk. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got Bjorn, co-founder here of Smart Places. As he mentioned, I'll go ahead and leave the links to their Discord and everything else you guys can get in touch, not just with him, but with the entire Smart Places community. That's actually one of my favorite things about this space is how accessible some of these founders and co-founders are, right? When you take a look at traditional um, Web2, it's extremely hard to, to get in touch with people that are at the very high ranks. But I find that in this space, you actually have a lot of the founders, um, CMOs, CTOs, et cetera, really hanging out with the community, which I think is one of the best things that they can do in terms of showing that they're human, but then number two, that they really actually care right about their community and about the actual project. So um, I really appreciate your time here, Bjorn, breaking down, you know, and introducing for my community what Smart Places is, touching on your existing partners, the connect to earn model, as well as your upcoming airdrop and your token launch. That said, for the ladies and gentlemen watching at the house here, if you guys are enjoying today's video, I'd appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If you learn anything along the way and you appreciate content like this, focusing on all the builders here in Cardano, consider subscribing to Dapp Central. And last but not least, if you have any questions surrounding smart places, please leave them down below for myself and Bjorn. And on that note, we'll see you all in the next video. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.